We are live. Welcome to Be the Change. My guest, well, first of all, my co host is Leonard Berg, and he's coming from uh, New York. And uh, my name is Cooch, and our special guest is um, the possibly future governor of the state of Alabama. Uh, Mr. Anthony B. White. Um, welcome, uh, Mr. White. A pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Uh, Thank, you. Thank we, you for having me. Before we begin our interview, I'd just like to let our audience in on a little bit of uh, Lenny and Maya's background. 50 years ago, we went to Alabama to participate in a voter registration drive in the campaign of, uh, of um, John Cashin. Um, uh, and not only did we go, but we organized with students from Harvard, CCNY, uh, and NYU, which we attended, uh, Freedom Ride, um, where um, we sent buses down to work the entire state. It's kind of scary at those uh, times to go as a Freedom Rider, um, which some people looked at as outside agitators, <laughs> to uh, help uh, Black people to vote but we were successful in getting a lot of voter registration. Uh, so this is, uh, for us, a, we are revisiting Alabama with another black man uh, running for the uh, governorship. Um, so welcome, Mr. White. Lenny, why don't you start us off? Yes, uh, I guess the uh, important question for us is, well, why is this an important interview? Uh, certainly any time uh, a black person uh, or people who have been left out run for some of the highest offices in the land, it's, it's important in and of itself. But beyond that, uh, I think we can all readily see there's a need for new blood, new voices in life, especially in the Democratic Party, because it seems like uh, the party has been losing out to the conservatives in, in reaching the common man, the common voter. So uh, we're excited to see a new voice, some new blood, uh, hopefully that can help to invigorate uh, the political process, not just in Alabama, but be a model and an example for elsewhere. So uh, Mr. White, uh, what made you decide to run for governor and why would you say you're eminently qualified? You know, um, I saw a need, I saw a need for someone to um, run for um, governor here with a moral compass, um, simply with a moral compass, somebody that's want to lead with integrity, you know, and that's something that our state has lacked in the last few years. I believe that um, I can um, bring my qualities to the table to um, help make things better for all people. Tell me, um, what are the demographics of Alabama? And for that matter, the politics of Alabama in terms of um, percentage of um, uh, black people, Republicans versus Democrats, and how long have the Republicans controlled the state? Um, it hasn't been a um, Democratic governor since, um, since uh, Don Siegelman. Um, I, I don't remember uh, the exact year but I know it, now is the time, you know, um, for change, for the better here in Alabama. And um, I believe that I can uh, bring quality to the table that can, um, um, as far as being relatable, um, I can work together with um, the Democrats and Republicans. We can work together to come up with um, solutions that will help um, Alabama grow stronger than ever before and greater than ever before. What's the split between whites and blacks? Um, are you saying like what are some of the things that are splitting? The percentages. No, the percentages. What percentage uh, of um, the black population of Alabama? I'm not aware exactly of the exact numbers of that percentage. Okay. Have you actually, uh, what's your actually working with uh, Republicans and conservatives uh, in 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 terms of uh, that kind of unity, which you say you can bring to the table. 
So I am a um, ordained minister. Um, been in the ministry for 12 years now, and I also carry a license of a bishop. And um, with that, um, I do a lot of uh, interacting with people. And we need someone like myself that, you know, that's able to interact with people, um, not a certain class of people, but someone that is able to um, be there for 100 percent of all people, 100 percent of all communities. And I feel that I have the um, relatability skills to be able to make that happen and bridge the gap in a lot of areas that's been missing for a long time here in Alabama. Now, Trump won the state of Alabama. Um, so let's take some of the um, hot button issues. What do blacks and whites think about the Confederate statues, the NFL protests, and the uh, Trump's position on protests in the NFL uh, and the national anthem? Well, it, it, it's that, that's a um, that's a subject that I've been questioned on a couple of times with the Confederacy. With that, um, I feel that um, we are at a in that in that particular instant, I feel that we are at a Red Sea um, um, situation. And, and and when I say that, I mean that was something that was caused to divide. But um, what we have to do as a as a people. We have to come together and understand that things that are behind, you know, we can't change those things. But let's move forward and not backwards. And we can do that as a people if we just um, set aside pettiness and understand that we're trying to move forward, um, move forward here in Alabama, here in our country um, with the. Um, go ahead. Well, the thing about it is, is it not true that just like in the times of Dr. Cashin, with the traditional Democratic Party, voter suppression was a big thing. And, and related to the issues of the Confederacy is racism, white supremacy, and, and voter suppression. And would you say, is that still a reality in the state of Alabama, voter suppression? Because it's been seemingly in many states, not just in the South. I would definitely say so. And that's why it's important that we um, equip the people um, to get out and let their voice be heard. But with the voter repression, um, we have to make sure that we have adequate help at the polls during the election time um, to make sure that things are ran smoothly, because that is a problem that I've seen um, throughout throughout the years. You know, people getting turned away from voting um, because of small things. But we have to make sure that we have people in place that is willing to fight for equality and to make things better, to make sure that our people voice is heard. You know, in the past, wasn't there, I've even seen cases where there, there were a gun, people with guns at the polls as a, as a way of intimidating people. And that's related now to the whole question of gun control, especially in light of the recent massacres. What approach would you recommend to dealing with that issue of uh, gun control? Um, we definitely have to pay close attention. Um, um, and I, I believe what the Bible said when it said that we are our brothers and sisters keeper. We have to pay more attention to what's going on around us. Um, and with gun owners, um, with, with people who sell gun companies, we have to make sure that they screen properly. Um, we have to make sure that um, um, that that the people that's carrying guns they're carrying them in a legal, you know, carrying them um, legally. Um, so I believe that uh, we just have to really just pay more attention to um, to this to this problem that our that our country faces. Now, what do you think about Trump's insistence on building this wall? Um, and associated with that is as the his whole. Um, reduction of the immigration or, and the qualification of immigration. You, you know, uh, before Trump, it was priority was given to families. He wants to give it to people that can speak English and that are the best and the brightest. And and with that, of course, uh, DACA. Most recently, he's talking about not allowing DACA to go forward unless the Democrats support the wall. Could you let our viewers know what DACA is, Cooch? Yeah, DACA is the program that allows um, immigrants who
who were brought over here um, as children to have a path to citizenship. Now, uh, for those of you that uh, may not have been keeping up with it, Obama was not able to get the Congress to put, move forward it, so he did a, pres a presidential executive order. And recently, Trump has uh, revoked that order, and now if Congress doesn't do something or he doesn't make an agree in six months, an agreement in six months, they will be illegal immigrants, even though they didn't really immigrate here because they were like born here at three or four or, or brought over here before while they were minors. So what do you, um, how do you think those issues need to be dealt with beginning with the wall? Is, and you, is that uh, an issue? And are there, are there uh, immigrants and undocumented uh, population in the state of Alabama? Um, well, to the um, to the question about the wall, do we need to build a wall? Um, that answer is no. Um, we don't we don't need to build a wall. Do we need to hire and beef up border patrol? Yes. Um, that that would be definitely um, a prime example of wasteful spending. Um, to the question of DACA, I, I think that we need to um, um, give. Uh, I think people should be here legally. You know that the tip, uh, first to point out that you should be here. Um, a citizen legally, you should go through the process of um, having um, legal citizenship. Um, but to the ones that are here, the dreamers, I feel that they uh, too uh, must go through the process, but um, we should not penalize them or um, I guess I can say look down upon them or give them the equal opportunity as a, um, as a citizen of the United States to be able to thrive, to be able to dream, to be able to um, um, achieve their goals in life because they didn't ask to be here. And, th and that, that's my view on the dreamers. Mm -hmm. uh, how about immigration? Do you have a lot of like farm workers or immigrants in the state of Alabama who uh, or a lot of undocumented because around the country, there's a lot of fear that uh, ICE is going to yeah. come in and uh, take people and send them away? Well, um, then documented um, um, uh, people around here um, in Alabama, but um, and um, point blank, they're taking away a lot of jobs from um, people that's here legally, you know, um, the American people um, that's here legally. But um, I feel that um, we have to make sure that we go the proper um, links to make sure that you're here legally and um, so that um, the jobs can be here for um, the United States, the United States um, people. What kind of jobs would you say they're actually taking from uh, the people here? Because what I hear is that uh, it's very difficult to get, whether they're black or white, to get American citizens to do some of the jobs that the uh, immigrants, uh, undocumented do, like working in the fields and uh, 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 domestic work. Uh, what kind of jobs would you say they're actually taking away? Um, well, uh, there are uh, a number of jobs. I I would definitely say that some of those jobs that you mentioned um, that that people have um, that that that's available, um, they're taking away a number of different jobs. Um, um, specifically to specify a certain job, I I, I, don't, I can't say a certain job, but I know that um, by talking with the people, by me interacting with people on a daily basis, um, um, all the time, you know, they talk about um, the jobs, and 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 I want to be that voice. Um, to the people so that um, so that we can hear what's going on, because sometimes we don't know everything that's going on. So that's why it's important that we have someone that's willing to listen to the people, because a lot of people shut out people. I, I like to say I, in, in the military, I learned a number of values. And one of the values that I think is very important that I learned is um, respect of the core values and respect. And I believe we should respect the people's voice and ear that they can actually um, talk to, because a lot of People of Alabama across and out doors are closed doors, and I want to have an open door policy where I can actually um, be an ear to hear some of the concerns um, of Alabama. Well, speaking of the military, um, one issue that has come up in the military is the decision on the part of uh, of, of uh, Trump to restrict 
the presentation of uh, the presence rather of transsexuals in the military, the whole fight around gay marriage, um, the restrictions now on birth control and the attempts to to end Planned Parenthood. Where do you stand on those those kinds of issues? I believe totally in um, human rights. I believe that um, everyone should have the same equal opportunities, equal rights, um, regardless of what choice or how you choose to live your life. Um, everyone are um, we, we're all American citizens. And I believe that um, if you choose to be um, a certain way or whether um, you should have the same equal opportunities as the next person. Do you believe the government should uh, place restrictions on organizations like Planned Parenthood uh, simply because some of the people they service may get abortions? So apparently there's a movement afoot to end, completely defund a Planned Parenthood. How do you feel about that? Yes, I do believe that there should be restrictions in place um, um, for, for those issues and for those um, concerns. What kind of restrictions would you recommend? Um, as far as the restrictions, I would recommend that we um, put something in place to where um, if someone choose to do the different things like in Planned Parenthood, um, such as abortion, which is a, a, a touchy subject to a lot of people, but um, I believe in choice. But what we should do is make sure that that person, that individual, have exploited all options before they choose to do so. Um, and I believe maybe two, three forms of counseling um, would help um, 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 professional counseling before they make a decision of that sort. I believe it should, shouldn't be just, OK, I'm, I'm going to talk with one person and that said, I believe they should go through a series of um, counseling before they make that decision. Do you think that a corporation should be able to deny um, 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 birth control or abortion coverage? Um, for their employees? I, 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 I don't. Um, it was one company, I can't recall, um, that... Um, made a big deal of that, but I, I, I don't I don't believe um, that um, they should be able to deny that human rights as a citizen. Well, while we're on this health issue, um, can Obamacare be fixed? How is it working in Alabama? I think Obamacare is excellent. I believe that we should keep affordable health care. We should fight for it. But what should we do? We should make it better. You always want to make things better. So we should fight for affordable health care to stay on the table. But we can add different things to it, such as expand Medicare, expand the Medicaid program so that um, we can have more uh, more um, streams of uh, being able to actually um, um, be helped because there's a lot of people without um, health insurance right now. Um, a lot of people um, have certain things that don't allow them um, to be covered in certain areas. So I think we need to expand um, things like Medicare and um, keep Obamacare on the table and um, com also come up with some single payer um, 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 techniques or some single pay um, options rather that can um, where people can actually have health care without paying, you know, an arm and a leg. So one, of the thing, one of the things that's so confusing is is that uh, there are a lot of poor whites who are on Medicaid or need it, yet it seems like many of them are the ones who vote for the conservative policies to end Obamacare, to restrict Medicaid. How do you explain that? Yeah, um, I, I, I don't understand it. And, and that goes back to um, educating the people. One of my platforms is I want to educate the people on what's really going on. I want to make um, politics transparent. I want to I want to lead in a servant servant um, leadership type way where I make um, politics transparent again so that the people can understand and know what's going on, what, what's going on in our state. Because a lot of people just do what's going on, don't know the options they have um, to do different things. And I want to be the voice for the people that make things um, uh 
see where I can actually reach and um, achieve those dreams. So I want to make um, this leadership role a transparent leadership role so that the people can see what's really going on. So, Kuz, I think you had a question about the Medication for All option. What's that about? Yeah, yeah, Medicaid for All. Um, that's what Congress says uh, the Democrats are supporting that as a single-payer system, Medicaid for All. Do you support that? Um, I, I think that that can be something that um, that should be taken a look at, yes. Now, uh Recently, uh, some studies have been done about uh, tax reform and the, 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 the uh, proposals that are on the table seem to uh, help the rich and the wealthy, but actually the, the poor and the middle class will actually wind up uh, paying more and losing some of the deduc deductions they have. Uh, what do you feel about uh, what's really needed in the area of tax reform? Um, with tax reform, um, I believe that um, we should make it fair across the board. Um, no one that's paying um, more taxes should be deducted or should be penalized. Um, and at the same time, if you work hard, and you achieve your goals and and you um, you you reach higher heights than um, um, someone else uh, as far as becoming a millionaire or whatever. I don't feel also that you should be penalized as well. I think it should be a fair tax across the board. Um, now, let me um, just advise our audience that there is a screen at the right of um, the uh, show that you're watching, and it has the. Uh, website of Mr. White, should you want to support him. Also, uh, if you have any questions, you can type your questions in there. We'll see them and um, uh, we'll bring them up as well. Uh, my next question is, do you believe in global warming? And what do you think about what needs to be done? Is it, do you consider that is uh, uh, something that is real? Especially in light of the recent uh, storms, I think they reached Alabama, didn't they? It, it did. Um, we're actually, I believe, um, catching some of the rain from um, Hurricane Nate right now. But um, I, I definitely, um, um, global warming is definitely a issue. And um, you know, with the glaciers and different things melting, causing the offset in the um, in the in the temperature and in, in the weather. Um, so I definitely um, think you know that that's something that we need to definitely try to address. And um, see what can we do to um, 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 possibly um, balance the global warming, whether it's um, focus more on green energy or, um, um, you know, I'm not really sure because um, I'm, I'm not a politician. But the thing is, I approach in this position, I want to surround myself with experts because I'm not a politician. But what I'm going to do is surround myself with experts in these different areas that can help me make a better educated decision, um, being led, you know, leading with prayer before the answers as well. But I want to um, surround myself again with, with people that are experts in these positions that can help me make a educated de decision on um, a lot of these areas that I'm not too familiar in. Well, on the issue of global warming, uh, you might want to look into the fact that a lot in the campaign for president was made about the coal, you know, the coal yeah. industry. The truth of it is far more, more than twice as many jobs are available in uh, solar technology, green energy than in coal. That's number one. And number two, apparently it's fracking where you are getting more gas at a much lower price. That's been the main thing that's actually uh, curtailed the coal uh, in industry. So these, again, you, I'm glad you talked about educating the people because just simple facts like that, uh, people don't, are not always aware of. Uh, That's but right. I want to I move on to uh, the question of discrimination. Um, you know, when people think of the South up North, of course, we used to call up North as up South. Uh, people think of racial discrimination. And 
of police brutality, although we see police brutality all around the country. What what is the situation there in Alabama? Have you uh, are you still uh, experiencing this sort of uh, uh, racial discrimination and police brutality that's been sweeping the country? Um, no, me not personally, but um, there is a um, there is there is a problem. There is a problem, and um, um, you, you can't um, get past that. There there is a problem, and um, you mentioned something about police brutality. Brutality. Um, I think that we should do something where we should. Uh, well, one of my focus is to bridge the gap between polices and communities. Um, so I want to educate the people to um, come together, um, whether it's monthly, um, um, bi-monthly, to come together in their communities and form different um, events together, so that you can know simply who your neighbor are, who your neighbor is. Um, also. I want to get the police involved into those event community days. And I believe that that will bridge the gap. Um, we can know who our neighbors are. We can know who our police officers are. And there will be a sense of relationship building through that process that will help our neighborhoods. And um, and, and and that's helping all 100 percent neighborhoods and 100 um, percent people. And, and that's what I want to fight for here in Alabama. I want to fight to bring that um, sense of um, togetherness and unify our state again. The black, blacks and whites, are they getting along in Alabama these days? I, I, I think so, yes. <laughs> now, um, which brings the question of, do you think realistically that you're going to be able to get white people to vote for you, giving all the, the divisiveness and tension that's coming from, um, well, the um, president of the United States. And also historically. Well, I, I people are um, tired of the same old, same old. And, and I think simply Trump made that a little bit easier for me um, as well. But um, but but again, a lot even a lot of Republicans now today are on the because they're just tired of the same old, same old. They're tired of the foolishness. They want people to fight for them, um, fight for their po pockets to, to, to be able to make more money on their jobs and, and to have more income for the household. Um, and, and I believe that I can be that person um, to fight for the people um, in a matter where I'm, where, I'm, where I'm trying to bring together instead of tear apart. Because I've, our, our state, our country has been um, in that state for so long as far as trying to tear apart. But we need to come together, sit party to the side, sit race to the side, come together and see what we can to move forward. Well, uh, now we know historically, uh, let's take the presidency. There have been blacks who run for president like Shirley Chisholm, uh, Jesse Jackson, uh, even Al Sharpton and before I'm Obama. And they they kind of recognized they had no chance of, of winning because they had a particular constituency. The question I have is, um, uh, and what they found out was that whether they won or not was not the point, that they had certain issues that would never be talked about if they weren't running for president. So I'm going to ask you, uh, what would be the issue, whether you win or lose, what are the most important issues that you think you will bring to the table that aren't getting the kind of attention that they need? And in that context, what would be a success for your campaign short of winning? Um, well, I believe that, um, I believe in uplifting, encouraging, and inspiring. A lot of people ask questions, um, what do you think? Because you're a preacher about um, church and politics. And, and my answer to that is um, there is a thin line that can be walked in that matter, such as um, inspiring, um, encouraging, um, uplifting people to get out and simply make it happen. Um, and I believe that um, um, that the dream that Dr. King talked about, we are living in that dream now. And I believe that every every citizen, every 
person of the United States should have that equal opportunity to live the American dream, to get out and make it happen for themselves. And everybody have an opportunity now. Um, we talked about some of the different um, areas that I want to focus on. Um, education. Um, education is the key. Um, simple as that. Education is the key. And I want to encourage people to get all they can, to get all the education you can, no matter what level you are at right now, just keep on moving forward. Things happen in families. Some people have to go to school. People stop going to school um, because of, and, and have a y years between those times of going to school. But I want to encourage people to keep on keeping on. Understand that you can make it if you keep on. I believe the, um, the, the train that thought he could. Um, he was going up the hill and he thought that he wasn't going to be able to make it. But what happened? He kept saying to himself, and I would say that, that he was encouraging himself. He kept saying, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. I want to encourage the people of Alabama and the people of this great United States that they need to have a I think I can mindset and understand that if they keep pushing, if they keep moving forward, they can achieve all of their dreams. If they keep moving forward and have and, and, and think that every day, I think I can and make it happen. Now, there are some states where uh, uh like in New York, for one, where there's a movement to make a bachelor a bachelor's degree free of charge, uh, because you know when we were growing up, a high school up to high school was free of charge, but now a bachelor's degree is like a high school degree. What about in Alabama? Is there any kind of movement like that to provide uh, you know uh, free education at the college level or reduced charges for people? Um, I heard Senator Barney Sanders talking about that a little bit earlier today. And um, there are things in place in our education system that I think is magnificent. And what they have started is where you can work towards your associate's degree while you're in high school. And that's amazing to me. Um, but and, and I think that every high school student should take advantage of that opportunity um, of getting their life in line. But um, there, there are things in place um, that's leaning towards that, I believe. But um, um, I, I believe that everyone should take advantage of those programs and, um, and, and, and try to make the best of it. Now, t tell me, and, and you talked about striving for change. Um, do you believe that Black Lives Matter and other groups are pressing too hard for change or too fast for change? Do you see them as a threat or disrespecting America, the military, or the police? Um, I, I don't see it as a threat. I don't see it as a sense of disrespect. But but there's a need. Um, um, it is a problem with Black lives. Um, black lives do matter. It is a problem. And, and, it, and it's something that we should not just give up on, um, um, give up on the fight of getting our voice across, because our voices need to be heard. But um, but um, we do need to focus on that because that is an issue. And that goes back to what I want to do if I'm elected governor. I want to bridge the relationships in our um, communities with our polices and um, city officials so that everyone can be comfortable with one another. And um, so I believe that we should focus on making sure that our voice stay heard. Um, also, white lives matter. Uh, all lives matter. We need to focus on. Um, on, 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 on we, the people, making sure that we bridge the gap and build our relationships within our cities, within our states and within our um, country. We need to bridge um, the gap on our relationships. What do you th what do you think about the NFL players taking a knee? Is that dis disrespectful um, to America? Me personally, I would not say that it's disrespect. But um, with me being a, um, a army veteran, I will stand and um, do it properly. Um, but um, if someone chooses to take a knee, um, that's you know that that's their right. They're they're human. They can do whatever they please. But I will do it correctly and stand up and um, you know do the pledge correctly. Yeah, is there the actual Kaepernick was uh, Kuj? I think he was advised by someone. To, to take a knee as to be to be more respectful by taking a knee that was more respectful than uh, something else he could have done sitting. yeah than sitting down 
uh, you spoke about, uh, before I get to the question about your dream and your vision in relationship to Dr. King's dream, I want to go back for a moment to something you said about surrounding yourselves with uh, experts and, and people, you know, who have uh, information and knowledge about the different issues. And some people call that uh, putting together a mastermind group. Have you yet put together a mastermind group that's working with you to do this kind of thing? Um, I have, um, I do have people around me that, um, that, that knows more than me. Um, you should never just um, surround yourself with people that, that know just less than you. Um, so I do oh, have people around me that knows more. <laughs> so um, I, I do have people that, 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 that I would say that are um, um, influential people that are on different areas. And um, I do believe that that would give me the, uh, the drive to being successful in this position as governor of the state of Alabama to lead this state and make this state prosper more than ever. And I believe that that can help me um, make that happen. Well, in a nutshell, to kind of wrap up, uh, what would you say your vision is for uh, the state of Alabama? What is the dream? What is your dream? What is your vision for the state of Alabama? My vision is to um, bring more jobs here so that people can um, live the American dream. Um, you know, it, it's been a lot of bloodshed and tears, our freedom for our rights, for um, equality. I believe in giving everybody an equal opportunity. And I want to fight that so everyone have that chance, every boy and girl. Um, I say a saying to my children uh, in the morning time. It say, love, look, listen to learn. Learn all you can, can all you can learn. Um, I want to give every boy and girl, man and woman, that opportunity to learn all they can so that they can can all of it up and they can use that for their future. They can use that to strive to higher heights so they can use that to be all that they can be in life and live the American dream. Do things like become homeowners, buy cars, um, have just the, the money to be able to take care of the necessities in life, the things that matter to the American people. Well, on behalf of Lenny and myself, we'd like to thank you for taking the time to share your vision, dreams, and plans. We wish you well. Thank And thank you, too, to our audience um, for joining us on our first episode of Be the Change. And, um, you know, we, thank you we, for want, having me. we want to emphasize that um, people should be able to, uh, those, those who weren't able to tune in, Cooch, how can they replay this show. What can they do to, to see a, a copy of this show? Um, the, um, we will send out in, uh, on Facebook a link. Um, okay. And if you already have the link to register for this show, when you hit that link, you'll be able to see the show. And also, I believe that Mr. White is going to put this show on his website. Um, Mr. White, would you tell what is your website? So for the people watching, it's it's on the screen at the right, but it's good to audially reinforce it. Um, I encourage everyone to follow me on Facebook, on where we keep everything updated. But the website is www anthony white the number four gov g o v dot com. That's www anthony white or the number four, gov.com. Thank you. And I want to emphasize right now that uh, uh, you, uh, Mr. White, are one of those thinkers and planners and doers that we want to keep talking to on this show. And we intend to explore and analyze and educate the public and activists on, on principles, concepts, uh, innovations, models, so that people can empower themselves and empower their communities. We believe that development begins from within and with the belief that change is possible. If enough good people not only believe it, but act to be the change we need in the world. And to take and to next time, keep the faith. Thank you. Thank you.